So we're going to talk about average rate of change today. Now, when we're talking about average rate of change over an interval, that means we're going from the interval from 1 to D. So we're going starting with a number, but we're ending with a unknown, which in this case is D. So what is the formula for average rate of change? Well, the average rate of change is the same as the slope formula. It is going to be f of x2 minus f of x1. You're probably more familiar with seeing this as y2 minus y1 in the numerator, all divided by x2 minus x1. Both of those are in the denominator. Now when we label this, Remember what we're doing here. This is our x1 and x2. x1 is the start of the interval, which is going to be our 1, and x2 is the end of our interval, is d. Now, to find f of x2 or f of x1, that means you have to take those values and substitute it into the function. That's what we'll do next. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is take 1 and plug it in for here. That is going to give me f of x1, which is the same thing as saying as f of 1, which is 2 times 1 squared minus 5, or 2 minus 5, which is equal to a negative 3. And the next one, I'm going to take my value, which is D, and just plug it in here, and that's fine. So now I have F of X2, which is the same thing as saying F of D, because that my X2 value is equal to D. And when I plug that in, I just get one, excuse me, I get 2 times d squared minus 5. Now let's go ahead and put both of those in our formula. And for our formula, in the numerator, I have, and I'm subtracting my two y values. Make sure you subtract them in the proper order. x2 has to come first. So I want to put this in the numerator first. So I have two d squared minus five. And then I want to go ahead and subtract negative three. Now remember, you're subtracting negative 3, so make sure you put parentheses around there. And then in the denominator, it is going to be your interval. So we are going to subtract d minus 1. Now, something a little interesting happens when I do this. If I simplify the numerator, I get 2d squared minus 5 plus 3 and in the denominator I got d, I have d minus 1 but I'm not done with that yet I still need to go through and simplify that a little bit more in the numerator I am left with 2d squared minus 2 all over d minus 1 in the denominator I now need to factor my numerator. To factor this numerator, now I need to factor that numerator. To factor that numerator, the first thing I'm going to do is factor out a GCF. My GCF is a 2. Then I'm left with d squared minus 1. Now I'm going to copy my denominator back over. That's d minus 1. Now, 
hopefully you recognize the fact that we're not done factoring yet. This is something special. This is d squared minus 1. This is called the difference of two squares. So I can factor that again. And when I factor that again, what I'm left with is 2 times d plus 1 over d minus 1. And that's, again, that's because this is considered the difference of two squares. So 1 is a plus and 1 is a minus. All of this is over d minus 1. Now I can go ahead and cancel out the d minus 1, and I'm left with 2 times d plus 1. And that is the answer to this question.